Hi, good evening, friends. So we are live now on behalf of the SME Chamber of India and Federation of Indian SME Associations and Tata Delhi Business Services. It's my immense pleasure to welcome all the speakers and panelists as well as the attendees for the today's uh, webinar. Building business resilences with uh, technology and innovations. You know, most of the industries are struggling to quickly and effectively deploy technology solutions for their customers and their internal business functions. Transformation is accelerating in the majority of the manufacturing units during these times. While the pandemic may have accelerated digital transformations, technology will change the industry for a long time to come. A common theme among the leaders is need to adapt the acceleration of the digital world. To know more about this, today we have a Romsha Singh, manager retail and regional marketing enterprises, Tata Delhi Business Services. She is talking on building business licenses with the technology and innovations. Romsha's career over a decade of experience in B2B market space. She has been instrumental in designing and implementation three of the first marketing initiatives during her career to solve the many technical business problems. She has been working closely with SME organizations and helping them to accelerate in their technology adoption journey. So I welcome Romsha. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mahesh. It was a pleasure. Uh... Um, thank you so much for a uh, great introduction. So, do you want to uh, introduce all the other panelists before uh, I move with uh, my part of presentation, or do we want to do it? No, I will introduce you uh, then later. Great. So, uh, allow me to share my screen, and I'll take it from there. I'm not going to take a much of uh, all the audience's time today. Uh, but yes, as mentioned by uh, Mahesh, uh, I'll be uh, talking a little bit on uh, building business resilience with technology innovation. Uh, a lot of products and services to offer from the House of Tartary Business Services, but uh, I won't, you know, get into the techn technological terms and, uh, you know, of those uh, solutions. But let me start with uh, one of my favorite quotations, which uh, I love talking to and, uh, you know, sharing in any of my webinars. Uh, which says that in the long history of humankind, those who have learned to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. So basically, uh, this quote is uh, a theory of evolution which was coined by Charles Darwin. And I'm sure all of us must have read about this theory of evolution during our school time. Somehow, it's very close to my heart and I feel very uh, apt even in this uh, current scenario. The COVID situation, the lockdowns uh, proved this that, you know, in in a scenario where we want to improvise and you know we want to move on, uh, ensure that our organizations are growing, ensure that as an individual we are growing, we need to ensure that we are collaborating and we are improving our skills uh, in any in one or the other format. So that's that's how I you know I feel that this is a very very apt quotation even in today's scenario. So as I mentioned, you know improvising is very important. So as an individual, you know we learn, we live, and we evolve. Similarly, the products which we are in the market and, you know, which, which is helping us to, you know, cater to the customer needs to evolve in order to meet the arising needs of the market. And that's where organization like Tata Business Services comes into picture. We keep uh, talking to our existing customer. We keep, you know, doing a lot of brainstorming, understanding the problems and challenges they are facing and hence come forward with a lot of, uh, you know, technology, uh, innovative solution which can help them uh, resolve the problems and challenges which they're facing to ensure that they are able to meet the customer needs in the market. So let's first have a, a very quick look as to what's happening to SME uh, in India currently. So the data points here are collected from a source, smestreet.n, and it clearly talks that, you know, uh, we, as in, uh, when I say we, it's a small and medium enterprises I'm talking about in India. We have understood the uh, importance of digital uh, adoption in our lives. So. Uh, just to you know, state the statistics. Forty-three percent of the SME users uh, use various platforms or uh, do internet platforms to sell and promote themselves. Trust me, my friends, it's a huge number. If we are talking about small and medium enterprises, 
75% of uh, small and medium businesses in India believe that digital adoption is the key to their success. And 73% of Indian SME are confident of bouncing back post-COVID. So what are we waiting for? We, we are well aware and we are into that you know, digital adoption journey. So when we say do big with smart solution, what exactly it means to you? What exactly it means to small and, business, uh, small and medium enterprises? So while, of course, I am going to talk about uh, products and services which we can provide and which we are providing to SME. But before that, I would rather take it up as a, you know, what strength do we bring as, a, as an organization to SME? So, uh, you know, when, when I talk about strengths and uh, we, which we bring on the table, we have 60,000 uh, buildings connected today. When I say 60,000 connected buildings, these buildings are connected by optical fiber. So we have more than 125,000 of kilometer of optical fiber laid across the nation. We are a team of more than 1,000 uh, enterprise team. Existing customer base of uh, TDBS, we have more than 40,000 business customers uh, who are being serviced by more than 1,400 partners and you know 1,500 channel teams. And we are present in 60 plus cities in India currently. Not to mention the trust and the customer service which any of the Tata organization you know, brings along with them. So before I move into my uh, products and services, I will rather take uh, five minutes here uh, and talk about some simple guidelines and technology for SME. Uh, these have been derived from uh, a lot of uh, brainstorming session, a lot of discussion through SMEs uh, while understanding their challenges, what, what kind of challenge they face and uh, how do we deal, uh, deal along with them. So uh, first being renting it and not owning it. It's a very, very uh, basic fundamental for any of the uh, SMEs while they're adopting the technology in their you know, digital option journey. When I say renting it and not owning it, what exactly do I mean? Technology is not a real state, my friend, so it will never appreciate. There will always be a better version of the technology. So rather than owning any technology, always try to go for a rental model. Second being selecting fit for purpose versus scale down large solution. So I'm sure each one of you present here will you know, agree with me that uh, as a small and medium enterprises, each of your needs are very unique and very simple. And the business processes keep evolving constantly. And hence, uh, the you know, constant evolving uh, leads to always ensuring that you, know, you are uh, selecting fit for purpose IT solution rather than the large the scale down large solution, which are generally meant for large enterprises. Third being, Bill as you grow, pay as you use. So in layman's language, if I have to tell you what do I mean by uh, when I say bill as you grow, pay as you use, always try to go for an OPEX model when it comes to IT technological solutions. Please reserve your CAPEX to grow your core business. Fourth being look for integrated solution versus silos of products. So, you know, in my uh, previous capacities where I have, uh, you know, dealt with a lot of small medium enterprises i have you know consulted them i have realized that you know uh, at times what happens that you know they say that you know currently i i, I just need xyz uh, requirement from you and then uh, even when i suggest that you know go for an integrated solution maybe today you are not requiring this but you know next two months you will be requiring this and it will cost you uh, quite cheaper they still you know don't take those suggestions and two months down the line they come back to us saying that you know we'll be needing this particular solution as well and it keeps adding on and adding on and adding on. At the end, they end up paying more uh, rather than they, if they would have taken the integrated solution from us. So that's what I, when, I, uh, when I say that always look for integrated solution rather than silos of product. I mean that uh, as a technology partner, as a you know, IT partner to any SME, we know what fits in, what, what doesn't. So we'll always try to let you know that you know, these are the solutions which fits for you and you should always try to go for integrated solutions. It is very easy on pocket as well. And that's what or any of these small and medium enterprises are looking while they are, you know, taking the digital adoption journey. And the fifth and the last being ensuring there is support. So IT talent for sure is very expensive. So always try to ensure that support is linked to your spend and it's not a fixed cost for your organization. So these are very basic, simple guidelines, but a whole is very important while you are, you know, designing and taking care of all the technological requirements for your organization. Moving on from here uh, to the product portfolio. So while we have a host of products and services uh, to cater to your IT and communication uh, needs, 
we have categorically divided them into connectivity solution, security solution, collaboration tool, cloud and SaaS, marketing solution, IoT solution. Uh, for sure, I'm not going to bore you all today with each and every product being discussed. But yes, I would really take a minute here and I uh, want to talk about a little bit. So as an organization, we realize that providing basic vanilla products or uh, IT products to SME is not going to help them in a long run. Uh, today, basic connectivity is not the need of the hour. We need to ensure that, you know, the uh, connectivity is backed by security and loads of other host of things as well. And that's where uh, in past couple of years, we have tried to, you know, bring on uh, to the table for SMEs, not only vanilla products, but also a host of uh, integrated solutions, which, uh, you know, which ensure that their uh, digital adoption journey is being taken care of by us. So, you know, when it comes to connectivity solution, while we were providing ILL and MPLS VPN, etc., now we have started, uh, you know, providing smart internet. So when I say smart internet, it's ILL backed by security and, you know, control and manageability as well. It, of course, is easy on pocket of SMEs and also provides a lot of other features which helps SME to concentrate on their core business while their, you know, security things are being taken care of by us. Secondly, if I have to talk about uh, SD Van Iflex, another very intelligent product uh, which we have you know, currently launched for our all the uh, van networking solutions for our SME. Easy Cloud Connect. Easy Cloud Connect, uh, I just give you a small example. So currently, if any of uh, you uh, as a small medium enterprises uh, wanted to connect, uh, you were going to one vendor for a P2P connection, going to a second vendor to get the cross, connect, uh, cross data connect, and going to different and various cloud service providers. Now with Easy Cloud Connect, we become the one-stop shop for you all. We'll be providing the last mile connectivity. We'll be helping you with the cost uh, data connect, and we'll be helping you with all the cloud service providers because we have that uh, ties with uh, all the major uh, cloud service providers in the country. Similarly, security solution. Uh, our security solutions currently are one of the most hot selling products here. The pandemic, the COVID situation has forced people to understand that uh, you know they just cannot keep waiting to uh, for the day when they are actually you know uh, there are security threats to their organization. So they have they realize this uh, fact and they they keep coming back to us and asking you know uh, what do you suggest for our organization? Which all security product we need to ensure is in place to ensure that you know we are secure enough before we you know we get uh, uh, affected by any cyber attacks. Collaboration tools. We realize that, you know, a uh, basic collaboration tool doesn't help. And today we need to ensure that, uh, you know, we are providing our, all our small and medium enterprises with host of products and services. And that made us uh, to uh, lead to a partnership with Zoom to ensure that, you know, we as a IT service provider to SMEs, provide them with our unified communication, uh, communication solutions to you all. Similarly, under cloud and SaaS. Smartflow. Smartflow is a product which uh, was, uh, you know, which took birth during pandemic. So the first year of lockdown led to a lot of conversation with our uh, small and medium enterprise friends, where they were, you know, sharing the problems and the challenges they were facing during this uh, lockdown situation. Starting from the fact that, you know, they were not able to ensure uh, business continuity. They were not able to, you know, uh, ensure the, uh, their uh, customer data is protected. And that's where Smartflow got launched. And so if I have to let you know about Smartflow, it's nothing but a basic cloud communication suite. And with this product in place, your organization now can work anytime, anywhere. You can ensure that your data is protected, your customer's data is protected. And a lot of other features are there in Smartflow. So of course, when I say that, you know, we have loads and loads of IT uh, services and products, yes, we are present there. And we are more than happy to take you all through each of these products and services. But time is not allowing me. What I'm going to do right now is uh, take another two minutes and allow you all to uh, view this two minute small uh, product show deal from our uh, site. So just enjoy this video.
So this was a very small video encapsulating a lot of our products and services, which has, uh, you know, which is there for all uh, our small, medium uh, enterprise friends. Moving on, um, so if I have to talk about key benefits from Tata, yes, we provide few of the most innovative products in the market, be it smart floor, smart internet, easy cloud connect. Uh, we have the best reach. So variety of solutions available to connect your remote location. Solutions are also available on LT. Uh, we provide bundle services. So as I mentioned, uh, we provide solution as a complete offering rather than, you know, uh, silos of products and services. We have the best SLA in the market. So overall level for all the data products is 99.5%. And uh, data business services ensure that same is maintained for connectivity solutions as well. We are very transparent. So we provide a self-care portal to you, uh, which uh, gives you access uh, to have a visibility of network uh, in terms of utilization, uh, performance of link, et cetera, et cetera. So just to mention a few of the key benefits from Tata. And before I end this, uh, I would uh, really want one of our customers to share uh, his experience uh, with uh, Tata Lee Business Services. So I'll take another last two minutes of yours and uh, let you all enjoy this video. I'm Manish Gupta. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Reso.ai. Uh, Rezo is next generation AI powered contact center where we automate the way contact centers and, and the KPOs have been working all this time. Started interacting with them, I think around four to five months back uh, uh, because that's when the need arose uh, in terms of the maturity of the solution. And I would say that in the last four or five months, it has been just awesome. The way Tata has really helped us uh, scale the services, the quality, the stability of the solutions is, is next to anything. I uh, the last deployment really that we had, it, there was a business criticality and Tata team took that as a challenge in helping us out and the services got up and running in a matter of few days. So hands down, uh, you know, they are super understanding, super accommodating. Anything that they can uh, do and have things under their control, I've seen them going out of the way and solving it out for the, for the customers. The quality is, as I said, although the documented numbers are 99.5% uptime, but I have personally observed those numbers to be in the range of 99.95 or so. It's like under commitment over delivery. And with Tata into the system, it has really, you know, reduced the downtime of our service because the underlying services are much more stable. So that is, so one third of cost efficiency is there just because we call Tata in the system. Oh, I would say uh, you guys are doing some awesome job. Uh, this is, is a service to the nation, service to the startups. So just give the awesome quality of service you guys are providing and uh, all the best for that. That was one of our customers uh, speaking to you all. Uh, they, in fact, they're using uh, our product called SmartFlow. And as I mentioned, that SmartFlow was a, a product which got bored during the pandemic situation. And a lot of uh, organizations are uh, being uh, held by this product and they have a lot of good reviews to talk about this product. So that's from my side team. Um, uh, happy to you know hear from you all. Uh, you can connect with us through our toll fee number 1-800-266-1800. You can write to us at dubigatarata.co.in. We are present on WhatsApp as well. Feel free to subscribe to our social media channels as well. And do not forget to uh, tag us at uh, hashtag time to do pay. So that's from my side, uh, side, Mahesh. Thank you so much. Thank you, team. Thank you all for being a patient audience. Uh, over to Q&A, Mahesh, or you want to do it at the end of the session? Uh, thank you, thank you, Ramshar. It's a uh, good and insightful presentation. <clears throat>
what you are doing uh, for the SME sector. It's uh, very helpful. The products. Uh, there is a one uh, inquiry uh, in chat box. You can ask your team to just to get to that and help him. Okay. Uh, one thing uh, we just wanted to ask you: We are providing our solutions and uh, products. How cost effective these products are? And are they subscription basis or are they some uh, products uh, on a fixed cost basis? How it is? Can you just uh, throw some light on this? So uh, I was saying that, you know, as I mentioned in my presentation as well, that, you know, we at Dardali Business Services are here to help small and medium enterprises. We understand the businesses they are into uh, with limited budgets, of course, and, uh, you know, they, they need to concentrate on their core businesses. So we try and we ensure that majority of our products are not on a fixed rental model. But as I said, pay uh, when, you know, bill as you pay and, you know, bill as you go and pay as you do. So it is as per the usage rather than a fixed cost. Which, uh, which generally, uh, you know, a lot of IT service providers uh, do like that. So it's not a fixed model. Uh, in fact, all of our products, none of our products are a fixed model for SME. Uh, does that answer, uh, Mahesh? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Thank we will have one uh, quick poll over here. So I'll ask my team to just start the poll. The poll, poll is in front of you. The questions are in front of you. I'll request uh, all the participants to do the poll. We'll have a quick one minute to do the poll. So friends, you know, uh, for manufacturing technology is as much technology and innovation is as much as required and alternatively uh, you need the, the finance finance and technology are the, are the backbone for the manufacturing industry and we heard about the technology now uh, we will come to the, the financing uh, part so uh, whenever you supply uh, to the uh, large corporates some other corporates your payment gets stuck and there are the mechanisms to uh, receive your delayed payments. So we have our next speaker, uh, Mr. Karan Narvekar. He is a partner with the uh, Regions uh, Law, uh, Law Partners. Uh, he will talk on the recovery mechanism available for the MSMEs, limitation period available for the initiative process, overviews of the Samadhan portal. This is a good initiative taken by the MSME Ministry and Finance Ministry for the delayed payments, and uh, which will be uh, uh, getting good uh, helpful to the uh, uh, SME sector. So we have a Mr. Karan Narvekar. Karan Narvekar is a partner at uh, Rich Head uh, Law Partner. He is a law graduate from uh, Government Law College, Mumbai, and has a master's degree in the international commercial law from from uh, Cardiff University, UK. He has previously worked in the corporate teams of economic law practices and. Shardul Amarchan, Mangaldas and the company. So, uh, I request uh, Mr. Kamal Narvekar to take it ahead. Floor to you, Kamal. Thank you, Mahesh. Um, thank, uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. I am going to be sharing my screen in just a moment. Is this visible, Mahesh? Yes. Okay. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for your time, for joining us today. I am Karan Narvekar, partner at Bridget Law Partners. I am going to be touching upon the recovery mechanism under the MSME Act and the benefits available to MSEs under this Act. So first, first I'll be touching upon the Micro and Small Enterprises Facilitation Council. This is this council basically takes up complaints and initiates conciliation and arbitration against uh, defaulters and it helps parties to recover their dues through this process. And um, the act basically is a welfare legislation wherein it aims to provide solutions to MSEs. One of them is the availability of an interest payment on delayed on delayed payments made by buyers. The act specifically imposes interest in the range of about 12 to 3 percent on defaulting buyers. MSMEs are MSEs are also empowered to initiate claims only for the interest amount 
in the event where they have received the principal amounts. The other part about um, the liability of buyers is that even if you don't have an agreement and your agreement is silent on due dates, buyers are liable to make payment in 45 days flat. And interest calculation starts immediately on the expiry of 45 days if your contract is silent. The next part is the MSME Samadhan portal, which is created for convenience of the micro and small enterprises. Complaints can be initiated online through this portal by uploading some information about your case, some documents. And in the case where you don't want to file an online complaint, you can also approach the council through an offline, through offline means. The other important aspect of this is in the case where a buyer wishes to make an appeal against an order passed against him, he is required to first deposit 75% of the decree amount before making such appeal. So overall, the act is in the favor of MSEs and it looks to support them by ensuring that they are getting their timely dues and many provisions like the ones I spoke about are present to discourage defaulters and to ensure that the payments are made on time and business runs smoothly. We'll just move on to the next slide. I'll be talking about the recovery routes available to MSCs and also other, other types of companies. In our experience, we have tried the following options for recovering outstanding dues based on the facts of the case. In any case, the first step is usually to issue a legal notice. It is important to put all facts on records to establish your case if the case goes to litigation. Issuance of a legal notice also shows the other side that you are serious in your efforts and recovering the outstanding amounts. You have sought legal help and you will enforce your legal rights. In many cases, we have observed that the defaulting party does not want to get entangled in legal proceedings or spend money on lawyers and the legal notice often compels them to come to the table and amicably settle the matter. The next option is MSME Samadhan portal. Micro and small enterprises are eligible to initiate complaints on this portal. The best part about this is once the complaint is initiated, the council itself sends a written intimation to the defaulter, directing him to make the outstanding payment. We have observed that such official communication usually is very effective and matters are amicably settled at this point of time. In cases where the intimation does not work, you can al always write back to the council because there's a period of 15 days provided to clear the payments. Post the 15 days, the seller can always go to the council and, and, and uh, request them to convert the application into a complaint. The next part is summary suits. In case you don't want to go the MSME Samadhan way, there is al always an option of summary suits. Summary suit is a legal procedure used for enforcing a right that takes effect faster and more efficiently than ordinary methods. The main aim of this is to summarize the procedure in case the defendant does not have any effect. Um, in this case, the defendant has to establish to the court that he has a credible defense and only after the court is convinced that there is a credible defense does he get a chance to argue in the court. In many of our cases, the, the case is quite uh, straightforward. Services are provided or goods are supplied and payments are not made. In such cases, there is no defense available and summary suits are quite effective. The next, next option is the insolvency and bankruptcy code. An application under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code is a very effective tool to apply pressure on the defaulting party. Non-settlement of dues can lead to basically freezing the operations of the company. The directors lose their rights and the insolvency professional takes over the company. But this is a very complex machinery and it all, before, the, before the corona pandemic, the minimum amount eligible under this act was 1 lakh rupees but this has been revised to 1 crore rupees. So depending on the nature of the case and the amount, IBC is also a good option. We'll move on to the next slides where we'll be providing an overview of the MSME Samadhan portal. The eligibility is basically for micro and small enterprises who can file the application. 
once you file the application online an intimation is sent out to both parties the intimation specifically directs the defaulter to make the payment in 15 days failing which the application will be converted into a complaint if the parties amicably settle the matter during this time the matter is closed the application is settled but upon failure to do this the application is referred to arbitration which is conducted by the council or the council hires a external body to do so these arbitration proceedings are required to be concluded in 90 days itself and as i said earlier if the defaulter wants to make an application or wants to make an appeal against this order he is first required to uh, deposit 75% of the defaulting amount of the decree amount to be eligible to appeal this is the uh, msme samadhan portal the other things in this is uh, we usually come across doubts where the portal requires uh, suppliers to apply to upload purchase orders in in the indian business we have observed that the system of purchase orders written purchase orders is not so common in such cases the, there is no problem an uh, oral affidavit an affidavit can be uploaded which says that the purchase order was placed orally moving on to the next slide um the next slide basically talks about the things to consider in your daily business and also while um, planning on recovering your amounts first and firstly the most important you need to consider is the limitation period there is a 3 year limitation period prescribed by law for which you can initiate complaint in the court while the msme portal does not prescribe any such limitation it does say that the supplier cannot be ignorant of his rights so even though the msme act does not prescribe any limitation you will have to prove to the council that you were not simply ignorant of your rights you had a genuine reason for which you waited for more than 3 years to initiate a complaint one relief in the limitation point of view is that the supreme court has gra has granted a relaxation which basically says that the period between march 2020 and october 2021 will not be considered while calculating this limitation period of 3 years due to this defaults going back up to july august 2017 are brought into the ambit and are within limitation so if you are planning upon this you need to critically focus on cases which are falling which are becoming due after july 2017 the next one is if you have many outstanding payments and many disputes coming up you need to analyze them and ensure that the contracts that you have with your suppliers or your purchasers are airtight you need to you need to talk about your rights you need to mention crystallized due dates there needs to be a dispute resolution mechanism in many cases we have observed that usually uh, recipients of services or goods after couple of years after a lot of time after a lot of follow up they bring up an issue that the services were not satisfactory or the goods were not up to the mark the contracts need to specifically specify language which state that any deficiency in service or any problem in the goods need to be bought up under a certain duration and if not done so they will it will be assumed that there is no such a uh, problem or deficiency in service the next thing is maintaining paper trail this is very important because in today's business most of the most of the commercial dealings are done over the phone sometimes whatsapp so in cases where you agree upon your rates you agree upon the timelines you agree upon uh, the terms of service you need to maintain a proper paper trail because if this goes into disputes these are the things that are going to help you establish your case the next is taking corrective steps as i spoke about uh, our experience many of our clients were facing a problem especially in the service industry where after a couple of months the service recipients or the clients just refuse to pay on the basis that the services were not satisfactory and um, 
this was a problem because the contract had no language stating that if you have any problem you need to come to us in certain number of days nothing nothing about that so one thing that we do in such cases is based on the disputes coming up and based on the problems that you face you need to take some corrective actions and that goes in the form of maintaining paper trail amending your contracts and um, the key takeaways from this is basically legal protection is granted to those who are aware of their rights and commercial foresight and past experiences need to translate into strong contracts and maintaining written documentation is very important to minimize risk exposure moving on so that was that was it from our side and uh, you can always contact us on solutions at bridgeheadlaw.com and you can read more us more read more about us on our website at bridgeheadlaw.com and um, i'm open for any questions and if you wish to get in touch with us you can always go through sme chambers thank you thank you thank you karan uh, we have a uh, few questions here one is that uh, from mr mayank singh we were a small enterprise till march 2021 now we have been upgraded to medium as per the rules can we still file a msme samadhan for a bill upon paid since 2 years it of a time when we were small enterprises so in such cases we have found that currently when you go on the online portal and you try try to make the application if you are a medium enterprise it does not allow you to do so but in such cases we have we have uh, helped clients to make an offline application and also get in touch with the council to get this issue addressed as they were as they were a, a micro or small enterprise when this default occurred uh, they can definitely try to take help of the samadhan portal uh one more question is there so if a company has a file for the bankruptcy and insolvency can we recover our payments through the delayed payments monitoring system so the first thing that happens when a insolvency petition is accepted by the nclt is that is a moratorium on all legal proceedings so you won't be able to do you will able to file your claim as an operational creditor under the insolvency code but you won't be able to initiate fresh proceedings and suppose if any company has gone into the bankruptcy and uh, there are the outstanding payment received to the uh, msme customers so what what is the mechanism for that so if a comp if an in when an insolvency application is admitted against a company a notice is issued in the newspapers and also to all financial and operational creditors service providers and uh, sellers are usually operational creditors at that point of time they will have to compile their claims uh, insert the details in applicable form b or form c and they will have to file it with the insolvency resolution professionally that is the way that they will have to do okay so uh, if there is any other questions are there i request uh, all the participants those who have questions they can write to us and uh, we can uh, try to uh, solve those queries with uh, the appropriate answers and uh, take it to the appropriate uh, authorities uh, we heard from, from the romsha romsha about the technology we heard from karan about the delayed payments now uh, we will uh, hear uh, from uh, mr vini uh, patro he is a ceo of record and uh, private limited about how uh, data platform can be helpful to stop these kind of such issues and uh, how customer can enhance their uh, credit cycle so uh, mr patro uh, has a uh, 12 years experience in the public sector and uh, entrepreneurship business consulting and coaching till recent uh, he served the government of andhra pradesh uh, in a ceo position and uh, transformed 200 performing government organization to very high performance in last one year so over to you mr vatro thank you thank you mahesh and thank you semi chambers for giving us the opportunity to interact with the attendees today am i audible uh, uh, mahesh yes yes you are audible all right 
and and I, I think we have about 10 minutes or 15 minutes to uh, talk about uh, how we are solving the problem of delayed payments for small and medium enterprises. And I'll keep it short and probably if there are questions, we can take it up. So uh, as Mayesh just pointed out uh, earlier, I've been with the government and as well as an entrepreneur. So when we, when I was an entrepreneur of, uh, of running the organizations, which is obviously over a size of small and medium, we always had the difficulty of collecting the dues from the buyers on time because uh, our business was in B2B. And I think the problem of delayed payments, I think has been a very, very long standing uh, problem in the country for a very, uh, for, a, for almost for so many decades now. So when we uh, started looking at, you know, how do we solve this problem and how do we, you know, make uh, buyers pay on time? There are solutions that we have seen out in the market uh, who provide uh, payment reminders or who provide uh, uh, solutions uh, uh, by taking uh, invoice discounting loans loans or working capital to ensure that uh, the problem can be sort of mitigated, right? So when we started deep diving into the problem, but we've understood the problem is in, you know uh, is critically starts at this fact called giving credit. So many in many cases, when a smaller or medium enterprises, you know, when they start or a micro enterprise for that matter, when they start giving credit to their buyers. The buyers maybe are in a good position to take the credit when they started giving credit over a period of time. Maybe the buyer's financial health uh, may be deteriorated. deteriorated by, for example, you take COVID as an example. Let us say there is a buyer who has been taking credit from you, uh, from the seller for a last five to six years. For the last five to six years. But uh, during the COVID, the buyers uh, you know, got affected. Now, you do not know how he how the buyer has got affected, but you continue to give the credit. As you continue to give the credit, buyer will not be able to pay you on time, and then you will get affected. The seller gets affected because sellers do not have too many options. Sellers today do not have too many options to deal with delayed payments. If they have to deal with the delayed payments, when it gets to default, the process of uh, samadhan or the process of a legal procedure or arbitration, all of this comes much later. But but by the time you already lost a very important uh, uh, you know period. Uh, where otherwise, uh, instead of following up with the buyer for the payment, you could have spent your time in increasing your business or uh, expanding your business. So what we understood, giving at the, at the time of giving the credit, it is very important to know the buyer, right? And if we, that is one of the reasons, of course, many small and medium enterprises give credit to the people that they know, right? So that is one aspect of it. The knowing the buyer and the second piece is how are we managing this credit or uh, do we have a proper channel uh, on a through a technology like a good credit monitoring when i say what is credit monitoring is maybe at the time of first time giving the credit you may be understanding by collecting some documents from the buyer or by you know doing something you will be able to see the buyer's potential to you know to take the credit but over a period of time are you monitoring how he's uh, how his financial health is so that you can take corrective measures in giving credit based upon uh, his financial health, his or his finan his or her financial health. So these are two aspects that we've started deep diving. And then we started uh, how banking industry has been able to solve this problem. Because in the banking industry, in, even in, in till uh, late 2000, still, I mean, up to 2010 almost, the banks were also facing payments issues of on their loan uh, repayments and credit card repayments. They were never coming on time. Banks were having issues. But I think today the problem has solved so much because bank has been able to build a very, very good repayment management system. With the repayment management system of the bank, if anybody delays, that information is captured into a credit bureau, like a civil and so on and so forth. When a business is uh, when a uh, businesses or borrowers or individual borrowers know that if they don't pay their bank loan repayments or credit card repayments on time, all of them know, okay, their score gets affected. The moment the score gets affected, they know that their future, their future requirements or as far as the loans or borrowing is concerned will get affected. Through this mechanism, not just India, but across the globe, we have studied different markets across all markets businesses 
have been able to uh, sorry uh, banks have been able to solve this problem through that a good a repayment management system or a loan management system with the help of a credit bureau model and when we started deep diving into that model we thought why can't we build something for businesses that's when we started building a, a very smartest credit monitoring and credit management platform where it allows the sellers to upload the all their customers in information in terms of how much a credit has been given at the same time the platform also allows to check the credit report of the buyer prospect to buyer which means who or a or person who is taking credit from you so basically you are able to buy a credit report of that person through the platform and see how he has been paying how his past payment track record based on that you can take corrective measures or you can take um, a decision on informed decisions on giving credit and once we start using the platform by taking the data and start using over a period of time the platform tracks the payment history and keeps giving you information that how the financial health of the organization is changing in from two two aspects one how the buyer is paying to you second is how the buyer's financial health outside your payments for example how buyer is paying the his his loan repayments and so on and so forth so this platform that we have built where we have also partnered with credit bureaus to provide you information from how these how your buyers are uh, paying their loans and how is their financial health and second is your buyers information on how they are doing paying other payments also right so this information helps you to make corrective decisions on giving credit so basically it is a, a it is it is on the philosophy called prevention is better than cure rather than of oh, giving credit and you know then then you know feeling bad about the delayed payments and how do you in fact do better business how do you make it informed decisions and inform you have informed the buyers uh, you have info, you know you have information about buyers to make better decisions on your business so this credit management the entire platform allows you to manage all your buyers even in case in a worst case even after that let's say your buyers have defaulted on the platform itself to a click of a button you should be able to uh, apply uh, or raise a legal notice right or apply for e arbitration so the idea is this credit monitoring platform that we built we have taken as a uh, an inspiration from the banking industry across uh, the different countries in, but we don't have anything as such in india except we are doing it but we are one of the first to do it in india there are a few such uh, businesses i mean few such uh, uh, companies in us and australia and malaysia have done it for businesses but of course banks in, in every country the credit bureaus and the loan management system has been able to solve this late payments so in our case the observation that we have seen uh, when we started working in the last uh, one and a half year or so there are manufacturers especially you know uh, uh, who are using our platform they are able to reduce the cycle of their uh, credit to credit uh, credit repayment cycle almost by 30 40 days why because they've been able to manage their buyers really really well and the buyers also are able to manage their payments so well because buyers now know how many payments are pending how many not pending so the buyers also know the track record so the beauty of how we we have been able to do this is we also partnered with some of the not pro- not for profit organizations called global global alliance for mass entrepreneurship and also any in, in initiatives with the, some of the associations across the country and with few governments to create that awareness among all the buyers why it is important for them to pay this awareness is something we keep on continuing to do uh, and through sms and email for all the buyers who are in our network or all the buyers whom sellers have whom sellers have uploaded on the platform we keep continuing to do this awareness this awareness creates one of the key aspects for the buyer to understand why it is important for him for his future to pay on time for example i can tell you how uh, an awareness is being created today uh, the credit re- credit bureau reports of many of the smes have changed a little bit because of the payments that have not been recorded during the lockdowns because rbi said don't record point 1 point 2 is after <coughs> the financial health of many organizations have got hit during covid now banks when these buyers or when any of these smes going to the banks banks are looking at credit report but credit report does not have information now banks are asking look give me your how you are making your payments right 
so we the, so for banks also it is so important outside the banking system how how timely payments you know how timely you're paying your bills that is what banks are looking at to give the credit so by using this information by collaboration with a lot of these not for profit organizations like global alliance for mass entrepreneurship where a lot of bankers are also there and along with our partnerships we we started creating a lot of awareness and, and almost we we send about 7 to 8 smss in a month where some of them are only educative for all the buyers to make them understand how it is important how their future is going to be protected and how they are going to be very very good at getting loans in the future and so on and so forth so that is a sort of a uniqueness of the platform that we have built with an impact to create uh, uh, the impact that we should want to create among smes especially the buyers who are not paying on time and to ensure the entire sector gets a better payment behavior over a period of time so we are using a technology at, in one place and a data platform which is what i'm focusing on where how we show the payment track record how we show the data in terms of and how we also uh, educate and create awareness on how data data on payment track record is so important for the buyers so the uniqueness of this uh, platform is about technology and data and also a social impact where we are working with associations governments and the not for profit organizations that's what we have done and then uh, businesses uh, today about 6000 businesses are on our platform uh, about more than uh, 1500 of yeah more than 1500 of them i think are manufacturers and many of the others are distributors uh, in the trade dress sector so there are some of the large enterprises are also using the platform uh which which are in public listed companies and so on and so forth and we've been able to make an interesting impact in the last 14 months and now we have partnered with sme chambers and some of the other chambers in the country to ensure that we spread the word we create this uh, change uh, behavior among the owners and the accountants and whoever is involved in making the payments uh for, for you know uh, in the in the sme sector so therefore uh, it is an interesting opportunity for us to speak to all of you as well so we strongly believe technology and data putting together is going to solve the problem uh, for uh, the sme sector and we also strongly believe like last ten years we have seen the consumer technology taking place so huge the all of us of lifestyles have changed with internet and mobile devices the our lifestyles have changed now we all or who are all owners we are also some of the owners of the companies right we also now started thinking how technology can change our businesses our technology can power our businesses power our growth therefore next 10 years we strongly believe a platforms like us or a business should be able to adopt technology and data platforms because informed decision making is what helps you to grow faster you have digital technologies already in place if you want to sell something if in jammu kashmir sitting in kanyakumari is possible now because of the digital technologies you use data platforms along with it you'll grow much faster because information is very important that's what i have for all of you and uh, hope to uh, see some of you uh, if you have any questions happy to answer and thank you for the attention thank you thank, thank you mr uh, uh, it's a good uh, initiative uh, where we can also help to the industry okay so if you wanted to have a good uh, finance from the bank financial support from the bank you should need to maintain your record properly okay your financial uh, strength financial weakness you have to assess and build your uh, credit record so that gives a good financial support on the banks and other institutions so uh, we have uh, left uh, two yes, questions over here yeah so uh, yeah please go ahead questions uh, we can have the poll uh, over here so i'll request uh, all the participants to uh, put the poll sir narvekar karan you are there i'm here i'm here so uh, we have a one question we have filed case against our customer for the recovery of the dues pending since uh, Wait, I think so. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. This has uh, already answered. This this question has already answered. I'm so sorry. 
no problem so you answer this question in uh, question answer directly reply you can right this question if anybody is having a question you can just uh, put in a q and a or chat box So it's a good interaction session today. So I think there is a question coming in. Uh, the name is called recorded. Let me uh, just type it in the chat box. Yeah. It's possible. Uh, maybe I can type uh, directly the link of the website. That would be better. It's recorded private limited, recorded.com. Traders can do the application on this portal. You can sign up easily. Can traders can make application on this portal? Samadhan? Yes, you can do so. If you're a micro or small uh, enterprise, you should be able to do so. Okay. So if you have any other specific questions, you can send it to uh, SME Shimmer of India. As I said, we will take it to the appropriate authority. And uh, I think so. Uh, we are done here uh, with this uh, webinar today. I'm uh, thankful to uh, Romsha. It's a uh, good connect with you and uh, your team. So thank you very much, uh, all the panelists, all the speakers and uh, attendees. Thank you very much. And uh, if you are not a member with the chamber, you can become a member uh, of the City Chamber of India to avail the other uh, services. Uh, and the, we can attain the programs. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure having you.